Hello everyone and welcome to the Practical English Brand. Today I'm recording this video based on the suggestion of Mr. Feroz Khan Safai, one of our followers on our YouTube channel. And I got some good news for you as well. We have decided to have live program once a week. Maybe in the future it could be twice a week, but for now it's once a week. And our live uh, classes like for two, three hours uh from 8 up to 10 p.m and you can come and ask your questions about related to i mean to the topic uh so mr feroz khan safai asked this question he suggested that many english learners and english teachers have problem with durative and non-durative verbs and then i decided to do some research and uh, make this complicated point very easy and very comprehensive for all of you. So I hope that you will enjoy this explanation. I've made it like a piece of cake, okay? So uh, let's begin with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So first of all, uh, <clears throat> you can call durative verbs non-terminative or non-punctual verbs as well. These are the second terms for durative verbs. And uh, you can call non-durative verbs terminative or punctual verbs as well. Don't forget, in case you, know, you hear like terminative or non-terminative, so I want you not to be confused. So these are uh, the other terms that you can use for durative and non-durative verbs. Next slide, please. Uh, now look, in general, we have action or dynamic verbs. And we have state, stative, or normal verbs. So here we have action verbs, there we have state verbs. How do you know the difference? Something easy. Put a verb most commonly in perfect progressive tense, most commonly in present perfect progressive tense. I mean, you can use them in past perfect progressive or future perfect progressive tense as well, but most commonly uh, they are used in perfect uh, progressive tense okay so present perfect progressive tense. so if you want to know the difference between action verbs and state verbs look put the verb in present progressive tense if it doesn't sound good if it's not common if you haven't heard it before it means that that's not a dynamic or that's not an action verb okay but if you put it in present progressive tense you use it in present progressive tense and it sounds good you've heard it many times before it doesn't sound kind of strange, then you should know it is a dynamic or action verb. And now, uh, state verbs, when we, when we talk about the duration of a state, are most commonly used in simple perfect tenses. And again, again, like in present perfect. Present perfect, not present perfect continuous tense. So now look over here. For example, here we have durative verbs and there we have non-durative verbs. You can put these verbs in present perfect continuous tense or any other continuous tense. But, I mean, most commonly, I mean, they're action verbs, but in present perfect continuous tense, uh, they, they, they sound kind of strange. I mean, they, why? Because they, they don't have a long duration. I mean, they're not used for long duration. Look. Look at the example. For example, you can say, he's been doing his homework since, I mean, for a few hours, for two hours. Or for example, she's been sleeping for five hours, six hours. Or for example, you can say, I've been working for many years. Or you can say, uh, they've been walking for a few minutes. Possible, I mean, doesn't sound strange or anything. But here, he has been closing the door for two hours. Does it make any sense? No. Why? Because you close the door at once. There's no duration, okay? Or for example, the bomb has been exploding for many hours or the bomb has been exploding for a few minutes doesn't make sense doesn't doesn't sound kind of you know uh, good or break he's been breaking the chair for for if you put a duration if you mention a duration it doesn't make sense why because it's a non-durative verb it's an action verb but it's a non-durative verb or finish for example i have been finishing my project for many years or they have been finishing, for example, you know, uh, the game for a few hours, for three hours. Does it make any sense? No, it doesn't. It doesn't even sound good. I'm pretty sure you haven't heard kind of sentences. So, the easy way to know whether this verb is durative or non-durative verb, 
put it in present perfect continuous tense, okay? If it makes sense, it's do it. If it doesn't make sense, if it's not, I mean, common, you haven't heard it before, I mean, it sounds kind of strange, so it's non durative. Now, the same thing over there, state verbs. When we talk about the duration of a state, keep in mind that most commonly we use simple perfect tenses, okay? Present perfect, past perfect, future perfect, but most commonly present perfect tense. So put the verb, if it's a state verb, if it's a, not an action verb, it's a normal verb. Put it in present perfect tense, okay? If you can mention the duration, you should know it's a durative verb. It's a state verb, but it's a durative verb. If you cannot mention, I mean, uh, the duration uh, of the state, it is non durative verb. Look, in, I mean, action verbs, we have durative and non durative verbs. In, uh, when it comes to state verbs, again, we have durative and non durative verbs. Look at these verbs. Durative, for example, you can say, I have known him for many years. Correct. I have known him for many years. It means that the state of knowing him uh, exists in the past, still exists at present time. Okay, the state continuously comes to present time. In the future, it may or may not exist. Okay? Or belong. You can say, for example, this car has belonged to me for several years. This car has belonged to me since 2005. This car has belonged to me for many, several years or uh, a lot of time, whatever. B, the third form of which is been, I mean the to be verbs. Again, you can use to be verbs as main verbs to talk about the duration of a state, and obviously to be verbs show the, I mean, the state of existence. For example, for example, I've been here for 20 minutes, possible. I've been here for 20 minutes, right? It shows the state. The state started in the past, exists in the past, still exists, I'm still here, and I may or may not be here in the future, okay? So, and also have. You can say, I have had this problem for a few months. I've had this problem for, you know, many years, whatever, possible. But look there, non-durative verbs. Look, I have understood you for many hours. I have understood you for, you know, a few days. Does it make any sense? Have you heard such a sentence? I'm pretty sure you haven't, okay? Or comprehend, for example, okay? So now we say, I have comprehended your speech for a few hours. I have comprehended your speech since 2 p.m. or whatever, okay? Doesn't sound good, so it means it's non-durative verb. Or for example, see, I have seen you since yesterday. I have seen you for three hours again, no. Okay, or promise, I have promised you for many years or for several years or I promise you for a few days or no 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 I've promised you since okay no 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 why because these are non durative verbs so they cannot be used for mentioning the duration of a state I hope it's clear now okay so now active or dynamic durative verbs look when it comes to action actually I mean sorry I mean I've written active here I forgot to proofread this, but it's actually action, okay? So action or dynamic uh, durative verbs, they could be divided into two groups. So one group, uh, when you talk about like, you know, a short duration, like a short duration, if you mention a, a long duration with these verbs, it doesn't sound kind of logical, okay? But there's another group of these action uh, durative verbs that you can use for both short duration or long duration. Look at these three verbs. Cry, for example. If you say she's been crying for a while, or she's been crying for an hour, or for two hours, or but if you, if you say she's been crying for many years, long duration, as soon as you mention a long duration, there is the concept of repetition, okay? So it means like at different times, because logically it's not correct to say she's been crying for three years or five years continuously. Why? Because this verb can be used for a short duration. But I hope it's clear now. If you mention long duration, it gives the idea of uh, repetition. Uh, please go back. Okay. So, drink. He's been drinking tea for a few minutes. It's okay. But what do you think? If somebody says he's been drinking tea for 10 years, if there's a long duration, he's been drinking. Does it make sense? Uh, does it sound, I mean, kind of logical? No. But in case you put it in a continuous tense and uh, you mention a long duration, it gives us an idea that uh, the action, I mean, happened 
repeatedly, okay? I mean, uh, in the past. Or walk, for example, he's been walking for a few hours, but if you say he's been walking for many years or 10 years, again, is the idea of repetition, or otherwise it doesn't make any proper sense. But look there, live. So you can say, I've been living in Kabul for 10 years, for many years, for several years. You can mention a long duration. Or you can say, I've been living in Kabul for a few days, okay? Because you just came from another province or from another place, okay? And then you can mention a short duration or a long duration. But not like I've been living in Kabul for a few minutes. Work. You can say, I've been working for a few minutes, I've been working for a few hours, I've been working for a few months or years, okay? So, short duration or long duration. You can use these verbs for both. Short duration or long duration. Or teach, for example, you can say, I've been teaching this class for a few minutes, or you can say, I've been teaching this class for many years, how possible. So, these kind of verbs can be used with both, mentioning the short duration or long duration. But these kind of verbs can be only used uh, while we're mentioning a kind of short duration. I hope this concept is clear. So now you got to find out for yourself. I mean, there are many, many, many verbs. I've just brought three of them here just to, I mean, uh, I mean to clarify the concept. But there are many other verbs. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, now, stative or non-continuous verbs, exceptional cases. There are some exceptional cases. Actually, I've tried my best to bring the most common uh, exceptional cases over here and explain them to you. And I hope that you won't have uh, a lot of problems, I mean, with the idea of using derivative and non-derivative verbs in the future. So here, uh, there are three common exceptional cases. Like most commonly, we do not use non-progressive or non-continuous verbs in continuous tenses. But in these three cases, it's okay. So the first case, if you use the adverb always or constantly, in that case, you may use a stative verb in a continuous tense. For example, look at the example. He's always wishing to become rich. He's constantly wishing. So now wish is a state verb, it's not a progressive verb, I mean, it's not a continuous or, I mean, action verb, but if you use adverb always, in that case, it's okay, I mean, it's common among native speakers, okay? He's always needing a lot of money, I'm always needing, you know, for example, a lot of time in order to explain grammatical points, so, possible. Next, if you see like a physical change, or physical change in a person or, or a thing, in that case, you may use, uh, I mean, stative verbs in continuous tenses. Look at this example. I was a little sick, but I'm feeling well now. Now, feeling well. Look, feel is a state verb, it's not an action verb, uh, and it's not a progressive verb. But, uh, because you talk about a physical change in the body, like, you know, I was sick, I didn't feel well, but now I'm feeling well. So when we talk about kind of physical change in something or someone, in that case, we can use, I mean, stative verbs in continuous tenses. Now look at the last example. If something is happening like uh, within a short period of time or after a short period of time, in that case, exceptionally, it's possible to use uh, stative verbs in continuous tenses. For example, look at the example. We're hoping to win the match if God wills. Now let's say uh, there's a match and a few minutes are remaining. Let's say there's a football match between Afghanistan and Pakistan, or there's you know cricket match between Afghanistan and Pakistan. And now there's just like a few minutes, maybe after two or three minutes, or maybe after a few seconds, you know, uh, it's gonna be clear that who the winner of the game is, of the match is. Okay. So in that case, you can use we're hoping to win. Okay. I'm hoping that we will win uh, the match. So like hope is again a state verb, but in this case you can use it in a continuous tense. And now let's move to the next slide and see what's going on over there. Okay, the verbs like, love, and see. Look, uh, I, I, wanna, I wanna say this, that sometimes, I mean, in spoken English and informal English, uh, 
I mean, you, we can use, I mean, state of working continuous tenses, but according to grammar, that's not correct. So now we should know, okay, this is formal academic English, according to grammar, is not correct, it's not a good idea, but among people, among native speakers, it's common and it's okay. So I brought these uh, examples over here. If somebody says, I'm liking this show, I mean, uh, like is not an action verb, and most commonly it is not used in uh, continuous tenses, but it has a special meaning. In this case, in present continuous tense, I'm, you know, liking this show. It means I'm enjoying it, okay? Or I enjoy watching this uh, show. Or he's loving the movie. He enjoys watching it. So that's the concept, okay? He loves the movie. I mean, love should not be used in continuous tense, but if it is used, it has a special meaning, which means he's enjoying something, okay? She is seeing a nice guy. Look, nice. I mean, see, I'm seeing you right now. Incorrect. I see you right now. It should not be used in continuous tense. But exceptionally over here, uh, if somebody says he's seeing a girl or she's seeing a guy, a nice guy, it means she has a relationship with him. Okay? Is he seeing some, anyone or are you seeing anyone? In that case, it has a special meaning. And I would say an informal spoken English. And it's fine. So now let's move to uh, the next slide. And I've brought some uh, mixed verbs over here as well. There are some mixed verbs. Uh, if they are used, for example, in simple form, uh, they have one meaning. If they are used in continuous form, they have a different meaning. So, the first one is, uh, I mean, see. The first mixed verb is see. If you use the verb see, as a stative verb, it means to know, to understand. In that case, it's not a good idea to use it in continuous form. Look at these two examples. I see what you mean. Sometimes you might have heard this while talking to, to, to people, to native speakers. Oh, I see, which means I understood. Or I see what you mean. I understand what you mean, okay? So in this case, it's okay. But I'm seeing what you mean. Oh, I'm seeing. No, in that case, uh, it's not okay. I mean, so if the meaning of the verb see is to know, to understand. In that case, you can uh, only use it in simple form and not in continuous form. But as a dynamic or normal verb, uh, it means to meet somebody. So in that case, you can use it in continuous tenses. For example, you can say, I'm seeing the director next week, or I'm seeing my doctor tomorrow, for example. In that case, it's okay, which means I'm trying to meet, okay, or uh, I'm meeting, you know, uh, someone. So in that case, it's fine. Now, on the next slide, there is another mixed verb, which is think, okay. So the verb think can be used as a state verb, one meaning, and as an action or dynamic verb, another meaning. Look, as a state verb, it means to believe, okay. Uh, I think he'll come. So now, I believe that he will come, okay? So that's the concept over here. In this case, it should not be used in continuous form. I'm thinking he'll come. Or for example, you say, I think uh, that candidate will win the election. I think the government will announce the lockdown again. So it means I believe that these things will happen. But saying I'm thinking that he will win or they will win the match, not a good idea. I mean, not common, not correct, incorrect. But the same verb can be used as an action or dynamic verb when you talk about the condition that like you're using your brain and you talk about kind of mental activity, in that case you can use it in continuous form. You can say, I'm thinking about my future right now. Okay, I'm thinking about my future right now. Or I've been thinking about this issue for a few hours or for many days or something like that. So in that case, it's okay. Uh, okay, so the next slide, uh, we have the verb have. Look, as a stative verb, the verb have means to possess something. And we should not be using it in continuous form in this case. For example, you cannot say I'm having a car or I'm, I'm having two brothers or he's having, for example, uh, many brothers. That's completely wrong. That's incorrect, okay? Look. They have a new car? Okay, correct. In simple forms? Correct. In simple tenses? Correct. But they're having a new car? Incorrect. 
Why? Because the meaning of this uh, verb is to possess something, and here it is used as a stative verb. But the same verb can be used as normal verb. In that case, it doesn't mean to possess something, it means to, to be involved in an activity. For example, you can say, we're having a trip tomorrow. It's okay, because you cannot possess the trip, and uh, you will be involved in a kind of activity. Or for example, uh, we had a party last night, or we are having a party tomorrow, it's okay. I mean, you can say, uh, they are having a party tonight, they are having a party tomorrow, it's okay. Because you cannot possess the party, instead you will be involved uh, in kind of activity. So in this case, it's okay. So finally, there are some other mixed verbs that I'm going to explain to you quickly. Uh, B, for example, if somebody says that uh, you're being uh, aggressive. It means you're not aggressive, but you act or you behave like an aggressive person. Or for example, appear, I mean, it's a state verb, it's commonly used in simple tenses, I mean simple forms, but if somebody says, for example, my favorite Qawali singer, Fahimi Fana, is appearing in Afghan star again, it means he will be performing there, okay? In here, uh, again, like I heard you, I can hear you, I mean, we're, not, we're not saying like I'm hearing you, but if you say, for example, he's hearing voices, it means like in his brain, like he's got like kind of mental uh, problem, okay? So he's hearing voices in his brain. So in continuous form, it has that kind of special meaning. And then look, uh, I mean, if it is used as a linking verb, it should not be used uh, in continuous form. For example, you look happy, he looks happy, or the building looks new. But when you hear native speakers, it's slang, it's informal, like you're looking happy or the building is looking, that's not okay. But if you use it as an action verb, that's possible. You can say, I'm looking at you, or I'm looking for something, like I'm searching for something. In that case, with a preposition, it's okay as an action verb. And uh, taste, uh, again, as a linking verb, it should not be used in continuous form. For example, the food is tasting delicious, I incorrect. The food tastes delicious. Or, for example, the bananas taste good, for example. But, uh, as an action verb, you can say, she is tasting the food, or I'm tasting the food, as an action verb, when it is followed by an object. In that case, it's okay, you can use it in continuous form. And finally, smell. If, again, if the verb smell is used as a linking verb, uh, it's not a good idea to be used in continuous form. For example, the flower is smelling good. No, it's not a good idea. The flower smells good. But as an action verb, you can say, I'm smelling a flower, and it's perfectly fine. You can use it in continuous form if you want to use uh, these three verbs. I mean, look, taste, and smell as action verbs when you talk about the action of the subject, not as linking verbs. When they link an adjective, adjective with the subject in order to show the condition of the subject. So I hope this much explanation about durative, non-durative, and mixed verbs is enough. Have a great time. Bye-bye.